Hi guys, we are going to be making this new bag called the Downtown Bag by Parker on the Porch. This is what it looks like right here. It's super cute. There's the front. I just put the same vinyl on the back. Okay, this is the 6x9 size. We are going to be making the 7x11 size. And this is oh so pretty fabric, custom fabric if you want to go get that. We're also going to be using this right here. This is also oh so pretty custom fabric. This one's actually currently a pre-order over there. So you can go grab it. It's called Glorious Morning right now. So let's get started. I have, I'm gonna make seven by 11. So I have my seven by 12 hoop, one sheet of cutaway, and you can use tear away if you want, whatever you prefer. Just know that whatever you use stays in the inside of the bag, okay? So I am using one sheet of cutaway. I will meet you over at my machine. Okay, I'm on my machine. I have my hoop on my machine. I have my design loaded. The very first step is to do the placement directly onto your stabilizer. So I'm going to run that. I'll come back and show you. Okay, that's what the placement looks like right there. Now this placement up here is going to show you where to place your zipper. We are doing the number three zipper bag. So we're using these zippers right here. And the number three refers to the width of the zipper. Okay. So if you want your zipper pull to pull from this direction, then go ahead and put it on this side. If you want it to pull from the other direction, just flip it like this. Okay. I want mine over here. So what you're going to do, you need to make sure that you have a long enough zipper that gets by these placement stitches here and over here. That's how you know you have a long enough zipper. You need the foot of your machine to be able to get by here without hitting your zipper pull or without hitting this end cap right here. If you can do that, then you have a long enough zipper. It doesn't matter if it's super long because if it is, we just cut the excess off later, okay? So the way you wanna place this, you wanna place this zipper right next to this line right here. You want it, sorry, let it focus. You want it about like that, all the way across. So get it like that, all the way across, tape here, tape over there, and then run step two. Step two is gonna do a line right here, jumping your zipper teeth, doing a line up here, tacking your zipper to your stabilizer. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape mine, and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, here we are. This is what your placement looks like. It went ahead and tacked down your zipper, so we are good to go there, and this is what it looks like. You can see the stitches and where I am next to there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and prep our fabric. Now this bag has a really pretty design down here, right here. Like I said, this is the six by nine. We're making the seven by 11. This one is the eight by 13. Okay, I'm showing you some different ones. Okay, so we are gonna be making this one. Now, something I do is I go ahead, I bring this into my software, the design, and then I print it out. If there's a detail on the front where you really need to fussy cut your fabric and make sure your placement is good, like for example, I placed Ariel right in the center right there, I need to know where this applique is gonna set on this bag. So the way that I do that is I take this, um, design, I print it out just like this. Hold on, let me get my paper scissors. And then I had to tape it together because it was too big for one sheet of paper. And then I cut here. Some people, I saw somebody do this cool thing in the group. They actually stitched out the placement onto um, vinyl, like the clear gauge vinyl. And then you really can see it because it's see-through, okay? But I just do this, so I have this. Normally I label these, I keep these and I label them because when I make this bag again and again, then I can just do that. So I do that and then I take, I'm getting a marker, and then I just take a marker and I just get a line right here. Oops, my finger got in the way, but. And I go like that. So I make sure I know what this one is, seven by 11, okay? Cut it, and then I keep that piece. So we know exactly where the applique is gonna go down here so we can center our design because on this fabric that I'm gonna be using right here, I already cut it to be big enough. I want 
um, the three Sanderson sisters to be right there. Okay, so this one's not for the, for far enough over. They would be over to the side, so I can't use that one. I'm going to have to use this one over here. So this is where you get into fussy cutting. Okay, so I kind of just place it there. I look to where they are in the center, and then I just cut off some of my excess. Now, I don't cut super close, so I can move it around later, but I am going to cut it so I don't have all this excess to do interfacing on. Okay. So here's our front fabric that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this down here at the bottom, but I will do that when it actually stitches out the applique so I know what size. Okay, and then I am going to be using this right here as my lining. It's just a purple from Joann's. Nothing spectacular. So the way that I do this, I kind of talk about it. I don't prep my fabric on camera very often, and I'm not going to prep all of it this time either. But what I'm going to show you what I do, I'm off camera, I know. I'm just folding this a different way. So I cut less of the fabric. Okay. All right, so I just folded it this way instead of it was folded the other way. So I turn my bag like this because we need two pieces of lining fabric going that way. I fold it like that and I just put it over my design like that. And then I just cut right below the stitch lines. I don't measure, this is how I measure. And then this is folded. So then I just go over here to the side like that. And then I keep the fold part over here because then it gives you a bigger scrap. And then I just cut like that. Okay, that's excess. And now I have my two liner pieces right here. I have my front piece right here. I'm gonna cut one more of these. It has to be because it's gonna be the back of my bag. And then I'm going to go ahead and put interfacing. I'm going to use fusible fleece on this front. I've been liking the fusible fleece feeling better than just um, medium weight interfacing. There's a scratchy side. This is what it looks like. It's just a thicker interfacing. There's a scratchy side and a smooth side. You basically just take the wrong side of your fabric up. You take the scratchy side of the fusible fleece. You place it down, big enough piece, and then I flip it over like this and then you sit and iron it and it irons on and it just makes this fabric thicker. Okay. So I'm going to do that for this. I'm going to do it for the back of my bag and then I'm just going to iron my two liners and then I will come back and we will be ready to go. Okay guys, I have all my fabric prepped. I have my two liners. I have my front and my back both with feasible interfacing on it. We are going to get started. So what we do first is we go ahead and flip our bag over like this, our bag, our hoop over. Okay, there is lines right here, this bottom line. You're going to go ahead and take your liner. Now mine doesn't have any pictures on it, but if you had hearts, I always go with hearts. If hearts were facing me, place it the way you would want it to face you. If it was saying words or hearts, face it towards you. And then since this is the liner, it's going to be flipping. So you want to go like this. Pull it up, and you're going to line this right underneath this bottom line right here. Okay, like that. And then you're going to go ahead and tape it. Okay, so this is going to stitch one tack down line. What's going to happen later on is you're going to pull it down. So that's how it's going to face back towards you, okay? So you're just going to leave that hanging up there. Just make sure it's taped on either side. Okay, and then go ahead and flip back over to the front of your hoop like this, okay? This is the top of your bag because that's where the zipper is. Now, let me make sure I didn't mess up on which one was going to the front. Let me see this one. <clears throat> I think it's this one. I think that's the back. Okay, let me see if I can line these girls where I want them. Basically, like... Right there. Okay, so I basically want it like right there, so it's going to be right on the edge. Okay, so the fabric is facing me the right way. Their faces are towards me. This flips as well, so when you flip designs, you need to go like this. Okay, so I'm going to pull it up. You're going to want it to line up right underneath this line right here. I normally just line it up next to the edge of the zipper. And the way that I do this is I kind of pull it 
I kind of put it where I think I want it. I think it was more over like this. And then I put my finger like where I think the stitch lines are gonna be because they're gonna be like right along here. And then I fold it over like this underneath, underneath, not on top, underneath the zipper teeth, just so I can visualize where it's gonna end up. So there's that. Now you could take, if I could find it, that thing we cut out, you could take it and line it up where it is gonna be like right there. It's gonna be about like right there. So you can see that your image is still in the middle, lined up with right here, and that it's gonna show. Now if you wanted these girls to be higher, then you need to just pull it up that way more. Okay, so if you wanted it higher, you would just go up like this a little bit more, and then this would go down more, and then it would show you what you would be seeing. Mine's fine where it is, but I just wanted to show you that, okay? So it's going to be kind of like this, and then I just make sure that it's there, and we drew here too, so the point is right there. I know the point's right there, so if that point is in the center, I know that I'm also lined up, okay? All right, so once you have it where you want it, then you're gonna carefully, putting my fingers under here, carefully go like this, okay? And then you're gonna tape it. So, I'm gonna take some tape. I'm gonna go like that. More tape. And tape over here. Okay. Now I'm going to go over to the machine. And when you put this on your machine, you have your liner just hanging out down here. So you need to carefully, I carry it with my hand under here and carry it like that. I put it onto my machine and then I make sure that my liner and my top are both out and straight before I stitch the next step. The next step is going to stitch one line right here, tacking this piece, your front piece and your back, the liner to your zipper and then you'll be able to pull it over, okay? So I'm gonna go over there and I'm gonna stitch that and I will come back and show you what it looks like. All right, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and stitched a line across. You can see that there's thread there, okay? So now what you can do is check to make sure you got it where you want it to be. If it's not where you want it to be, I would actually take the time to pull it back out. There, okay. I just place this here. I'm just gonna look and make sure. Because if this is off center, when you're trying to center a design, it's gonna look weird. If you use a fabric that's not centered, it's not a big deal, but this one would be weird. Okay, so I think it's perfectly fine where it's at. So what you can do, if there's too much fabric down here, then I go ahead and trim it. tape off too. So I'm just going to trim some of this so you don't have a bulky spot right by your zipper. You want some there, just not a whole bunch, especially with my fusible fleece attached, okay? Get that. Okay, now your liner stays up here for a while. So when you put this back on your machine, make sure your liner stays up and out of the way and doesn't fold over at any point. But what you're going to do next is you're going to pull this over just make sure that it's flat and smooth. And then you're gonna stitch the next stitch step, which is gonna go ahead and go around here, tacking the front piece of your fabric down to your stabilizer. You leave your liner up still. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the machine and I'm gonna do that. Make sure this stays out of the way. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and tacked this all down all the way around so it's smooth and nice. Our liner's still hanging out up here. We're going to do step five. Step five is going to go ahead and do the placement of the applique. So we're going to do that directly on here. And I'm going to stitch that. I will come back and show you. Okay, you can see right here it went ahead and stitched your placement. You need a big enough piece of fabric to go around all the stitch line right here. Okay, so I am using this coordinate 
that goes along with this glorious morning fabric. Now my fabric is cotton lycra. This isn't woven, it's cotton lycra, so it's stretchy fabric. And so I went ahead and interfaced this with SF101 interfacing. It um, is what you use on cotton lycra when you're making bags, so it stops the stretching of the fabric. It doesn't stretch, okay? So it's on there, I already ironed it on. It goes on just like any other interfacing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this fabric goes over all of my placement stitches and then it's lined up how I want it, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and run step six, which is gonna go ahead and tack down this applique piece, okay? I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to tell you is when you're doing appliques, the other thing that you can use is heat and bond light, and that goes on the same way. You just iron it on and then you pull off the um, paper covering on it. I used FSSF 101, but if I was using woven right here, I probably would have used heat and bond light, but I just wanted to show you, um, tell you that as well. Okay, the next step is gonna be step seven, and it's gonna do the two little line detail down there. So go ahead and change your thread to whatever color you want that to be, and stitch step seven. Okay, I just went ahead and left it black right there. So what you're gonna do next is you're gonna go ahead and cut this excess right here. So you're just gonna go off. I leave all of this down here. You want that to stay. That's gonna be cut off later when we flip the bag. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here along all the way down here and all the way up because we're gonna have satin stitches here next. So we need to get this excess fabric out of the way. So I'm gonna just use these applique scissors right here and I'm just gonna cut all along the line to get rid of that fabric. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. I went ahead and trimmed all that up, okay? Now we're gonna do step eight, which is gonna be the satin stitching. One tip that I like to say is when you're gonna do a big amount of satin stitching, make sure your bobbin is full because if it stops in the middle, sometimes it doesn't look right. You kind of can see the bump where um, you had to switch your bobbin and your thread cut and stuff. So when I do a satin stitch that's gonna be a really big one, I always make sure I have enough bobbin thread in there to complete that part. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch step eight. I will come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. Okay, step nine is gonna do a top stitch right here down the center of this satin stitch. So I'm gonna do mine, I'm gonna use this teal color and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I will run it, I'll come back and show you. Okay guys, we have our front done. It went ahead and did the satin, it did the stitches. Everything that we're gonna stitch is done. If you wanted to add something, like you added a name on here or you added something else, then you would stitch that right now before we do our next step, okay? You always want to um, stitch whatever you're doing, like if you add a name or you added like a felty or you added something to this, you wanna stitch it before you pull your liner down. Now the, one of the purposes of your liner is to hide all the back stitches, so you wanna make sure all your stitching is done first. But I'm not adding anything else, so this is to the point where we pull our liner down. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip to the back side of our hoop like this and you could take this tape off now because you don't need it in that spot okay and then you go ahead and pull this down okay now mine are always too long it's better than having it too long than too short in my opinion and i'm just going to trim so this doesn't get stuck in the machine okay like that now you're just going to want to make sure that it's smooth Okay, and then go ahead and tape this down. I kind of like the tape up here as well. You want it taped pretty good. You don't want any of your corners folding in on you on the next two steps because then your liner is going to be ruined on your bag. Okay, so I have all my corners taped down. That's the underneath of my hoop, so we are good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back over to my machine. We're gonna stitch the next step, which is just gonna go ahead and stitch all along here, tacking your liner to your bag to the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that, and I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. Here's the top of our hoop. Here's the underneath of our hoop, okay? 
So our liner is tacked down now. So now it is time to put the back of your bag on to the front of your bag. And whenever we do that, we open our zipper. Okay, so I'm gonna open the zipper. You wanna open far enough over that you can turn through the hole, but not so far over that the foot of your machine will hit your zipper pull, okay? So that's good for me. So now, this is where you add anything you wanna to add to your bag. If you were making this a purse, you would go ahead and do your loops up here. Let me get, a lot of people add purse straps. So you basically, this is just um, vinyl right here. This is Stardust Vinyl by My Punk Broidery. So you would just like loop it through, make it the right size that you want. You would loop it through and you would go ahead and place it like this. The hardware would go on the inside and you would just place them both sides. And then next it's gonna be stitching all the way around your placement stitching, stitching and it will tack it in, okay? Make sure your hardware is on the inside. If you wanna do a little clip on the side, you would do the same thing. Just make sure your clip's on the inside like that. Okay, and the farther you have over here, the longer this part's gonna show on your final bag. If you pull it closer, it's gonna be shorter, but make sure the foot of your machine can get by here without hitting your metal, okay? I'm not putting any metal in here, so I'm gonna take that out. Well, I think, am I putting metal? Oh, maybe I am, okay. Maybe I am, I need to cut this a little bit smaller then. Originally I wasn't gonna, but I forgot I'm gonna make something else with this. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this a tiny bit smaller because it didn't really fit. Okay, Let's see if that fits better. Okay, we are good to go there. Just have a piece of fuzz. Okay, so this is what it looks like and then you would just go like this. Okay, like right about there. Make sure I don't want to use like a darker one. All right, I'm good. I'm just going to use this. Okay, so I'm going to use this right here like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take some tape. Tape it down. So you are good to go. Okay, if you're gonna add anything else, you would add it right now. That is all I'm gonna add. Okay, then you take the back of the fabric that we're using on the back that we already prepped, okay? Now, this doesn't flip. All these other ones have flipped, so you want it um, placed differently. So this is our fabric facing you the way you want it faced. Instead of flipping it, you don't wanna flip it this time because it will be upside down. You wanna do it sideways like this, okay? So you're gonna do right sides together like this. Make sure you get over all your placement lines, okay? And then you go over to your machine and you're gonna stitch your very last, one. Well, no, we have one more, sorry. You're gonna go ahead and stitch the stitch step and it's gonna go all the way around here and closing your bag. Make sure your zipper's open, that's the most important part right now, okay? So I'm gonna go stitch it, I will come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and enclosed the front. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip to the back of our hoop, like this. Okay, there is a different way to do this. I forgot to do that again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this on. So right when you place your zipper, I'm actually gonna show this now. I always forget because I don't do it at this step, but I did want to show some people because some people might like it better. Okay, right now, this is the back of our fabric. I'll show you how to place it. If it, we had hearts towards us, you go ahead and flip like this. You don't do the flipper style like before, okay? So we're going to end up going like that. But I have cut away. So you have this spot right here. Once the bag's done, all my tutorials on cutaway show you how to do it at the very end when the bag's out of the hoop. But um, some people like to do it right after the zipper is tacked down. I didn't do it there, so I already have this fabric here. You can go right here when you have better access to it. And you're just getting the cutaway. Don't get the zipper, okay? and you can cut it away right now. Cause then you don't have to worry about catching the fabric. 
Now I'm still showing you at the wrong point in the tutorial. You would do this right after you tack down your zipper, then flip your hoop over and do it then, because you're gonna have to watch out for this fabric. But let me just show you it here. Okay, so now you can go ahead and cut right here. Just don't cut your fabric, okay? I always try to slide it. See how I'm not moving the scissors? I'm just trying to slide it. Okay. Now, if you've watched my other tutorials, I do this later, but it is a little easier to do it right then. It would be even easier to do it right after your zipper tacks down, because then you won't see this excess stabilizer next to your fabric okay so thing for me to remember next time before i get to this point but there we go now we have that part done okay so back to this this is our last stitch step this is the liner okay you'd have the right sides facing you if there was hearts it was great then you're going to go ahead and flip it like this to make it going the right way okay so go ahead and make sure you're past all your stitch lines. There's going to be a hole down here, an opening, so you can flip through this hole. So make sure you have a little bit of excess fabric down here. Okay, I'm just going to go like that. Get past all your stitch lines and then go ahead and tape this. Okay, and then we're going to go back to our machine. Now when I put this back on my machine, I always look under to make sure that this didn't move. You don't want this to move. Okay, before I stitch the last step, then go ahead and stitch the very last step. It's going to go ahead and stitch what it just stitched, but it's going to leave an opening right here. Okay, I'm going to go stitch that. I will come back and show you. Okay, yay, we're done stitching. So here's what the top of your hoop looks like. This is what the underneath of your hoop should look like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take this off of our hoop. Okay, if you had tear away, you can just tear all this off. We have cut away on mine, so we are going to cut it. I'm going to turn to this back so I can see where the opening is. There's no stitching here, so I know the opening's right there. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut at an angle right by where these stitches start. I'm going to turn. So just cut around your bag. Be careful not to cut any of your stitch lines. And then you're going to cut to where these stitches end right there. And then you're going to turn out. I turn out. Okay, and all that excess. Now you're going to go ahead and cut this excess right here. I'm just going to cut this straight across. Okay, now you need these liner pieces. The liner is the either piece on either side of the hole. So there's the hole. So these are your liners. I go ahead and fold them up like this. I fold my bag over so it can hold those out of the way. And then I flip over so I can see the stitch lines. I can't see the stitch lines over here, so I always cut from this direction. Make sure you cut straight. If you cut an angle right here, you're gonna end up cutting your liner, okay? So cut straight, and I always try to look. You don't need any of this excess stuff right here. You only need your liner. Okay. I'm going to take all this and get it out of here. Okay, here we go. So here's your bag right there. So you have your liner. We are going to flip through this liner first. Be kind of careful. You don't want to tear your fabric. Okay, I'll just pull it through. I always stick my fingers in the corners and kind of push out. That's kind of how I do it. Okay, and then I have this tool right here where I get my corners out better. Don't press too hard. You don't want to go through your lining fabric. Okay, 
So you can see the zipper's already open, and because we cut that out, it's already cut out, so we don't have to cut it out at this stage. Normally I cut it out at this stage, but we did it earlier, so that is good to go. That was kind of easier, so I should probably start doing that. Okay, now I'm gonna use this tape right here. We gotta close this hole down here. You have a big hole in here. We're gonna close it. So I use this peel and stick tape. The other thing I like to use is this fabric tack glue. Use whichever you please. Or if you have a different method, go for that. So there's a sticky side to this tape. You're putting the sticky side down and I place them directly on these stitch lines right here. You'll see them and you get all the way across, and then you just tear, it just tears, okay? Now I'm gonna rub this. I think the worst part of this tape is getting it started. Okay, so then we're gonna go ahead and flip it in. The reason I leave that excess fabric for the liner is so we can sandwich it in right here so you have a clean closure. Okay, and I, when the bag's big like this, Little bags, I don't tend to need to do this, but bigger bags, I use these Wonder Clips to get it set up where I want it before I start pulling the tape. Okay, so get your liner exactly where you want it. You're just gonna like sandwich this in. Okay, so I want that there. There. All the way across. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, like that. Okay, now you're gonna start your corner, and I like to start on this side, I think maybe just because I'm right-handed. The other thing that I like to do, I'm gonna get this out. Okay, the other thing I like to do, if I miss like this tiny little corner right there, the tape went right under it. I don't like that little flap right there that happens. So I put a tiny bit of glue right there in that tiny spot where the tape missed because I want that I want that completely sealed. Otherwise it's just going to leave a tiny little poofy opening right there. Just tiny but it still bugs me. Okay so you just keep pulling this tape. The key to this tape is to pull a little bit at a time. If you pull this whole thing across it's so sticky it's hard to get it off your fingers. Like so you just want to pull a little bit at a time and then place the fabric back down. And I'm just putting this back on to hold it. Oops, that just popped off. Okay, when you get to the end, you just pull it out. And then I'm just going to pressure it. You don't have to do anything else with this tape. It adheres just by pressure. You don't have to iron it or anything, which is nice. I'm just going to press that down for a minute. Okay. Okay, these don't even need to stay. I'm just going to take them off. Okay. And I'm just going to rub it and smooth it. All right, then you can see that it's closed. There's no opening, it's straight, looks great. Okay, and then we already opened up here, so that's great too. So we're gonna go ahead and flip through this hole now. Okay. I'm just gonna make them in there, pushing it through. Okay, now you're gonna wanna use Whatever you have to get your corners out and clean because you want your bag to look really nice. This is the last time you turn. Okay, let me smooth this out. Okay guys, we just made a 7 by 11 downtown bag by Parker and the Porch. This is what the front looks like right here.
super cute. This is what our back looks like. Super cute. So we're gonna open the zipper. There's our liner. You don't see any of your stitching, completely lined. No seams or anything, okay? And this is what it looks like. Super cute. And so again, this is the seven by 11. I also have the six by nine right here. So you kind of see the size difference there, six by nine. And this was with vinyl and this one I did with fabric. So you kind of see what the difference looks like. And then this was the eight by 13. So there's three of the sizes. You get a lot of sizes with Parker on the porch design. So you can make them um, fit whatever you want it to fit because you get lots of designs, okay? So this bag is super easy to make. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it helps you. If you have any questions at all, you can comment on the YouTube. I don't see them as often. I will see it quicker if you go comment in the Parker on the porch Facebook group and there's also a lot of admins and other people there that can answer it maybe quicker than me but I'm more than happy to answer it again this is oh so pretty fabric my vinyl both these vinyls are from mypunkbroidery.com this is the stardust this is I think she calls this dots or something this is like a black dot or something um my these are all the number three and the number five zipper is releasing the same day. So you will have a choice of either one that you would like to do. These zippers I get on zipit.com or zipit.com, zip zipit on Etsy. And um, I'm pretty sure there is like a 10 or 15% discount for Parker on the Porch people. If you search zip it on um, in the Facebook group, it will show what the code is and then you can get a little bit of a discount um what else <laughs> oh so pretty fabric oh so pretty fabric i don't know it's probably cami i need to go look it up i think that might be cami lulu fabric i have to go look it up though i didn't look that one up i only looked this up because i knew we were making this one okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial let me know if you have any issues if you enjoyed um, this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up that would be great go ahead and share it that's also great go ahead and subscribe and um, if you want to be notified uh, when the next tutorial comes out go ahead and click the little bell and it will notify you i will see you in the next tutorial have a good day thanks